So I'm pretty excited about the newest arrival here. Today, we're going to find out how much light the sun produces in PAR. So I was just sent an instrument by the Apogee Light Company. This instrument is called the MQ500 Quantum Flux Meter, and it measures how much PAR is shining down from the sun or any indoor growing light. And in a minute, we're going to go out and we're going to read the sun's PAR output with this little meter. But first, we got to step into the university and learn a couple quick things so that we can fully understand what we're measuring. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to explain this the best I can to you, but this company has made some really useful resources, videos on YouTube, and I'll put links in the description below. You can go check them out. They also have a website, and you can go check their website out, and it goes into great detail on these meters and how they work and why they work and why we need them in the horticultural industry. All right, so I've come up with some visual aids so that I can run through this quickly and show you how light works and how it transfers down and is read or seen by the plants so that we can turn all this into a number and start getting some reference ranges for our indoor lighting. All right, so the sun shines down light on the earth and it shines it down in the form of photons and those photons move at different wavelengths. And you can see this more clearly when the sun hits a prism or hits a droplet of water, what comes out the other side is a rainbow because it divides those different photons up, the different wavelengths up into different colors. Now the colors that come out are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So this right here is a full spectrum of light between 400 and 700 nanometers roughly. Outside of that spectrum is ultraviolet light and infrared light. Plants and humans can see between the 400 and 700 nanometer range. Neither of us can see ultraviolet or infrared. So what that means is photosynthesis occurs with the light that is between the 400 and 700 nanometer range. Let's go over to another slide here and we'll try to understand the difference between humans and plants. So this is people here. This is the human range. So we see a full spectrum of lighting with our own eyes. But we see mostly in the green spectrum, right in the middle. We see 10 times more light in the green spectrum than either the blue or the red ends. Plants see the entire spectrum from 400 to 700 nanometers. They see the blue, the green, and the red equally across the board. Now, if someone were to try and measure light output from a light source of the sun with a lux meter and measure lumens, that's what we see with our eyes. It's gonna measure mostly in the green range. So, with one of those meters, you're missing out on all the reds and blues. But, with a PAR meter like this, we can read the entire spectrum of light that is usable for the plants. So now we understand those basics, what we wanna do is figure out how to get that entire spectrum of light, how to measure it, how to figure out how to get that spectrum of light and put it into a number, a usable number. I'm going to show you right now a range of numbers and what they're good for so that you've got a reference point to use this thing for. And then this is going to get fun. We're going to go out and we're going to do some experiments. All right, so now that we understand the basics of how this thing works, we need to know what is PAR. PAR is just photosynthetically active radiation. It's just that range of photons between the 400 and 700 nanometer range, right here. It's that range of photons beaming down and it's converted into a number. That is the number, that is the, the range that the plants will use. It's usable light for the plants converted into a number known as PAR. And what we need to know here is that a good PAR reading for indoor grow lights for seedlings and cuttings would be around 200 to 400. For vegetative growth, 400 to 600. And for flowering plants, 600 to 900. So this should give you a reference point to understand the numbers that we're about to see in our test of the sun. All right, so the first test I wanna do here is inside of our hoop house. And this is covered with 50% shade cloth. So it blocks 50% of the sun to my eyes, but I wanna see how much sun this is gonna block in a PAR measurement. So here we are down at the plant canopy and there's still a slight haze of clouds over the sun. So you're seeing it fluctuate. It's kinda of up and down between 400 and 
you know, low 300s. I think that cloud's passing over again. But uh, there's the par reading. That's pretty amazing. So we're right in a range for, we're almost to the vegetative growth range, but you know, it's a cloudy day. So when we're, you know, I'm kind of curious here, the sun is going to pass here, or the clouds are going to pass over the sun, and we're going to see exactly what this number is with full sun. There it is, boom. Look at that, right at the plant canopy height. The sun's out, and we're at 500, 600 range. Perfect for vegetative growth of plants. And there we are, look at all that beautiful green growth. And as the summer comes on more and there's fewer clouds, we're going to get that all summer long right at this plant canopy. Really cool, man. Love this information. This meter is just going to do so much for us here in figuring out exactly how much light we have in outdoor versus indoor. One thing I want to test, though, is what this does, what this plastic does to the sun. So I've got it down at the level of the plant canopy. But as I raise it, I have a feeling... Yep, you can see it. Let's turn this. You can see it going up 700. Almost 800, 750, 740, somewhere in that range up near the top of the plastic here. And that's because anytime you have anything between the sun and your plant canopy, that whatever that is is going to diffuse the light. And so it's going to change based on height. But when we're out in the full sun, it doesn't change based on height because the sun is so far away, it's such a small number moving this up and down in feet or inches compared to how far the sun is from the earth. But when you diffuse the light with a greenhouse covering like this, you're going to get different readings depending on how low or how high the plant canopy is. All right, so now we're here on the north side of my pole barn. And of course, if you were in Australia or New Zealand, you'd be on the south side of a building to get some shade like this. But uh, I always talk in my videos about putting cuttings on the north side of a building in the northern hemisphere because that's where you're going to get lots of overhead skylight, but no direct sunlight. So based on the numbers that I showed earlier, let's see where this thing is at for cuttings and how it's going to look. And there it is. Here we are. See if we can read that. 200. Right around 200. Exactly what I was saying. And guys, this is my first trial here. I didn't check this ahead of time. I'm not messing with you. This is real. I didn't know this, but intuitively, I knew that cuttings needed to be in the shade, but with lots of overhead skylight. And there it is. There's the proof. It's perfect. Everything I've been saying on this channel for years now, you want your cuttings on the north side of a building or the south side in the southern hemisphere where it's blocking full direct sun, but plenty of overhead skylight. That is amazing. That is so fantastic, man. It just confirms everything I always thought about these cuttings. And here it is. That's how much par they need to root. And I've been rooting cuttings real well in this kind of an environment for years. So let's go test this meter out now in the full sun and see exactly why we don't put our cuttings in direct sunlight. We are in full sun in Western Washington state. It is almost noon, so we're gonna get about the best reading we can. There's a little haze of some uh, clouds over there, but they're not really blocking the sun right now. So let's just turn this on and see what we get. Look at that, wow. The par reading here is through the roof. 24, 2500. Wow, that is insane compared to indoor lighting. So now the sun's gone behind a little cloud. It's not a real thick cloud, but you can see the number has come down. We're in the 1700, 1800 range here, but still that's a massive amount of light. And that's why things grow so well out here under the sun. And it's also a full spectrum of lighting. Look at this, this is just one last little test to show you. This is pretty cool. So the sun is completely blocked by a cloud, but there's all the light going around it. I think that cloud's passing now, but it's still, it was at 800 at the lowest, 800 par. Now that the cloud's passing, it's starting to climb. Still hovering around that 1100, 1200 range, but it's going up. As soon as that thing passes, we're going to be up around 16 to 1600 to 2400, I suppose, depending on uh, where that cloud is. 
There it is, there it goes. And the sun's almost fully out. Boom, look at that. That's pretty slick. Wow, that's pretty cool, huh? So I'm really impressed with what this thing can do in regard to measuring the light output from the sun. The actual usable, photosynthetically active radiation the sun is beaming down on plants. And then taking that information outdoors in full sun, Western Washington State, midday, and seeing what the difference is in this hoop house. Really interesting stuff, and I think it's gonna get even more interesting when we take this indoors with our indoor grow lighting and we test out different lights in different tents, different combinations, you know, and just get all kinds of different variables and see exactly what's going on with these lights. So if you guys have any suggestions or anything you want tested with this Apogee meter, just put your questions down below and I'll take a look at them, start jotting things down, and we'll come up with some cool videos. But I really wanna go around and test a lot of these lights that we're getting, as well as the T8 bulbs that I've had inside my little grow area inside the house that you guys have been watching videos on with the petunias and all that. I wanna see what those T8 bulbs are putting out in par. So I just wanted to give a big thank you to the Apigee company. I'll put a link to their website down below. This is just a really neat meter and it's gonna go a long way in helping us around here. If you guys are interested in this, go check it out. It's not a cheap piece of equipment, but once again, it's not cheap. This is a really nice top of the line piece of equipment that can go a long way in helping us with our growing, helping us understand the lighting in regard to our plants. So again, I wanna thank you guys. I'm really excited to move forward on some projects and experiments with this little meter. So if you guys like this, if you learned something from this, I found it very interesting, hit the like button. Subscribe if you wanna follow along and see more readings of all these different lights that we got around here. Have a fantastic week, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.